It's good to see you. Welcome back. Hey, good to see you. You have, about a, one, you have like a one in five record of stocks being up to down when, when you're on. And here we are yet again. I want to ask you about kind of where we are, because we've come a long way from the lows of May 20th, right? The, the S&P is up nearly 8 percent. The Nasdaq's up nearly 9 percent. Did we learn anything this week to give us a clue as to where we're heading next? You know, I, I think there were some data you saw today from the jobs report. But generally, I think when I talked to investors, we did a bunch of meetings on the road this week. People are more and more confident that earnings are going to grow. You and I have talked about that a lot over the last month or two. People are trying to figure out how much are earnings going to collapse. Cyclicals look really cheap. Growth stocks are down 50, 60, 70 percent. I actually think people are getting data points now that maybe uh, corporate earnings can be up this year versus last year, getting a little bit more confident that maybe things were just oversold a couple weeks ago. So, so you didn't take anything negative from, let's say, Microsoft? and their guide down on, on their EPS. Now, I know everybody tried to say, oh, it was just FX. It's not fundamentals. Uh, but then there was a note today about the App Store slowdown for Apple, what that could mean for growth of, of their services business. You, you just dismiss all that? Not at all. No, I just think there's a bifurcation in the consumer. Uh, you know, obviously the low end's getting hurt more by rising oil. You're seeing some signs that housing's rolling over. Clearly the data, the economic data, have peaked and rolled over from, from the highs. Uh, I, I think that's obvious. Uh, I think you're seeing a number of companies, even last week and the week before, Walmart, Target, talk about expenses and costs. So I think there'll be a bifurcated consumer where the high end can handle uh, higher prices more than the low end. And you're seeing that even on the tech front, too. Look, we, it's probably started, Scott, with Netflix, right? People don't need nine streaming services. So you're seeing some, some slowdown in some of the spend we saw during um, the, the depths of COVID and maybe over-optimism about those companies continuing to do that. But... I honestly think Microsoft's a little different, so I'll take that one separately. But generally, I'd say things are fine, just not as good as they were. Yeah. The fun strat technician Mark Newton told me yesterday in overtime, he thought the lows of the year were in. You buy that? You believe that? I think it's possible. I mean, technical guys are always better than I am at uh, two-week trading calls, so I'll defer to the experts. But I, I, I look out, and I think corporate earnings probably grow 6% this year. I think there's a lot of stock buybacks. Maybe you get two. Uh, percent net buyback. You got a dividend of one and a half. Um, I think that cocktail tells me six to eight percent total return for equity markets on a 12 month forward view is a reasonable framework. The thing that I'm really excited about, though, when I look at this week and last week is just underneath that, how many opportunities to, for stock picking are forming. One of the things that's been really hard in the last several years when you just get interest rates going down is really picking winners from losers, right? And now, there's just so many relative opportunities. So I think if you're a stock picker, the second half of 2022 is going to be really a good time for you to long and short ideas and generate spread. I'll talk about some of your picks in a moment. But what about this move that we're making back towards 3% on the 10-year, as Mike Santoli was noting? I think we're 295 as we, as we go into the weekend here. Can we handle going back above 3% again? And even if we approach the prior high? I think if the 10-year yield backs up because people think growth is going to be better, that's probably a net positive for equities and risk-taking. If people start worrying about accelerating inflation again, and that's what's correlating it, probably not. But to me, while inflation will probably be higher in the second half this year and the first half of next year versus any kind of recent history, I, I think inflation has probably peaked. And I think that's probably the key. In order for the market to really go up, you probably need a directionally dovish Fed, as you and I have talked about. We, we I think that. that's possible, Why? but not likely in the near term. Yeah, well.